Hey, how you doing? It's Trader Joe's. I'm just doing another video here on um, this one. I'm going to be doing it on maintenance of a classic Sebenza. Um, this is a, a Chris Reeve classic Sebenza that I got from uh, on a message board. Uh, when I got it, it didn't come with uh, the box and the um, and the tool, which it ordinarily comes with. Uh, the tool is a uh, an Allen wrench. So, what I have done here is I have uh, I had some at home anyway. Let's just see if I can find it. If it's the right size. Let's just see. Yep. All right. So I got the Allen wrench. And what you're gonna probably need when you do this kind of thing. And um, I've done this a few times after watching several videos uh, on it because uh, initially I, w I didn't have a lot of confidence that I could do it, um, but it seems that uh, Chris Reeve provides the tool with the uh, with the knife when you buy it for the intention of of um, taking it down yourself, and uh, it's really nice because when you do it, you you actually start to appreciate the knife more because it it uh, it reveals all of its uh, well-made qualities and things like that about how it's put together, its machining and uh, the tolerances and stuff like that that everybody always talks about. Um, so you're going to need some, maybe some paper towels, um, uh, some maybe some Q-tips, you know, for uh, cleaning a little nooks and crannies. Um, I'm going to use like maybe, uh, I have a, a microfiber cloth, like you know, the kind that you would use for cleaning eyeglasses or something like that, just in case. Um, and uh, so, let's get to it. Um, this is my uh, Nanzan, the uh, it doesn't it doesn't have the same size screws. I mean the uh, the th this end is the same size. This though you need a special tool. It's called a, a, a it's a Derolin plastic tool that has uh, knobs that fit into those little holes, those four holes that are in the pivot. Otherwise I, I can't disassemble it. But I, I probably could if I wanted to. I, I do have a uh, something for taking. A, it's called a spanner wrench for watches. And it probably would fit in there, but you know, I'll just wait until the tool comes. Also, I don't have uh, the um, the proper um, grease. Uh, Chris Reeves knives uh, sells a uh, manufacturers or whatever a uh, type of grease uh, called uh, fluorinated grease. Uh, I, from what I've seen, it has a component in there uh, called. Um, Let's see. P T F E. I think that's in in the fluorinated grease, but that's what the, that's what's in this. And this is a product called uh, Super Lube. And I, I've been using this for many years, and it's, uh, it's it's always been performing very well for me. So I assume that it would work okay with this. And the other knives I have, some of them have titanium, and um, you know, part of the concern is that um, the types of grease. There's some some types of uh, chemicals can 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 put a uh, affect the surface of the titanium. Even though it's uh, it's, it's virtually sta it's virtually stainless, uh, it has um, it's it's a porous surface. It's you know because it was sandblasted, the um, it it could affect the uh, surface. So you may want to. Have to take that into consideration. Don't just use anything. And initially, this, I screwed up because I, I used like automotive grease. You know, the first time I tried doing this, you know, I got this, you know, a couple days ago. And uh, when I put it in, it just didn't really feel right, and it smelled funny and stuff like that. And then, and then I remembered I had this, so I tried this, and it's it's worked perfectly. Um, but I'm I'm waiting on the other grease. So, also I have a a rubber mat below here. It's like the kind of mat that you would put underneath a, um, in the bottom of a drawer to keep uh, silverware from bouncing around. Uh, it's nice quality is that it, it's, uh, see it doesn't make any noise when you drop something metal on it. It, uh, it absorbs the impact, uh, keeps parts from rolling around. So, you know, there's going to be a couple of small pieces in here like screws and, and rings and things like that that you don't want to, you don't want to lose. So, plus it's a nice looking background. All right, so. To take it apart, you'll notice that there's uh, there's a uh, standoff in the back, uh, and this is the the classic Sebenza. 
Um, there's a standoff in the back, another one over here close to the pivot, and then there's the pivot itself. Uh, some of them may, may have a, a third one, a third thing that's back here, but that's not, not actually a pivot. It's a, uh, it's a lanyard, um, like a, a rod that goes through here, and it's like a free-floating rod. Actually, the same kind of rod that's in the back of the, uh, the Umnanzan. And it, it doesn't actually, if you look carefully at it, let's see, it, it actually can move up and down. Let's see if I can push it from the bottom, you can see it going up and down. It um, it's free floating, so it doesn't it doesn't provide any structural stability, but it does uh, you know it's just an area that you could you could attach a uh, a lanyard to it. But in in my case, it didn't it didn't come with that. I don't know if it does come with it or not, but I know some of them do have them. I've I've seen them. Uh, I just attached the lanyard to one side of the the handle slab as opposed to both sides. And it's, it, I think it's going to help me with my disassembly. I'll show you. Um, so you lay it down, and you're keeping track that there's, this, there's a standoff in the back that's big. Right? It's big in the back, right? BB, big in the back, kind of like J-Lo. All right, so it's big in the back. Uh, I got my lubrication ready. I got my Q-tips ready. I have paper towels ready, and I have uh, microfiber cloth ready. So I'll start off by from uh, also um, before I started even thinking about doing this I checked a couple of videos and there was uh, one guy named Solo's Knife Review. Excellent videos. He's got a lot of these and, and uh, he you know he really knows what he's doing it seems like and you know, he seems like a really nice guy and you know by watching his videos I kind of figured out how I'm supposed to do this. Or how you can do it. There, apparently, there are a number of different ways you could do it. But what I would recommend doing, because this is what's worked for me, is initially you first want to loosen up the pivot a little bit. So you put the, uh, the Allen wrench into the pivot, and you loosen it a little bit. All right. Then you go to the next uh, standoff and just loosen that just a little bit. And that just gives it a little bit of uh, flex, right? And then you could take the rest of the uh, the pivot out by unscrewing it. And it's a short screw, as you'll see. And um, you take the screw out. I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time as I'm doing this, but I shouldn't be doing that. So, all right. All right so you take the, the pivot screw out and now the back of the pivot is uh, it's it's a rounded bo uh, bolt or screw or whatever that's on this side and it you know you can't grab it with your nails because it's so flush against the back of the titanium that the best thing to do is to take a uh, take the um, allen wrench and just press it against the inside of the you know through the place where the screw was it fits inside there you know, this is a lot smaller than this. And you can just press against the inside of the back of the screw. And you'll see it start to come out like that. If you keep pushing it, it'll eventually just fall. Maybe, All right, like that. So now you see that the, the hole is there. You can see right through it. All right, so now essentially the, the blade is free. It's, it's being held in place right now by the tension of the lock bar pressing on the side of the blade. So, um, what some people do is they may put uh, a piece of mask, uh, you know, electrical tape or something like that on the side of the blade. I mean, on the, on the edge of the blade to avoid, you know, the possibility of getting cut or something like that. Um, I didn't do it. I should probably should have done it. You know, no one might knowing my history with uh, what can happen to me. Uh, so, I'm taking a chance. But I don't think I'll, I think I'll be alright. So I, you know, I th I like to put my finger here to hold the. Uh, the lock bar from slamming into the back of the um, into the other slab of titanium. So now I can just pull the blade free of the handle slab. Just lift, lift my finger up, and now it touches. All right. So now there's two washers on these. All right. They're both uh, bronze phosphorus washers. There's one here. There's another one here. 
Now, this is a, a, a right hand Sebenza. I'm right handed, so it has a, a, a thumb stud on here, right? And the washer on this side is big, all right? So the thumb stud here, big washer. Remember that, right? So it's big. All right, and then there's a smaller one on this side. Now these are just these are not attached to the to the blade itself. They're just sitting on it because of uh, the prior lubrication is is uh, forming a cohesion. But they could actually just be lifted right off. You know, it was held on by just by the the oil itself is holding it on. See, so the oil take it off, take it off on this side too. Now you'll note that there's also in the center of the blade tang is uh, the bushing for the blade. Because you pull up, push up a little bit, it, it, it free floats within the uh, tang. You can pull off the bottom phosphor, uh, bronze phosphorus washer, place that down, and then you take the, uh, you can press the bushing all the way through. You know, maybe you take like a uh, Q-tip or something like that to push it all the way through, right? And it just falls out. Now the um, it's it's machined so perfectly and precisely that it's exactly the same size, you know, as the um, the hole in the tank. So that's something to consider. You know, it's uh, also part of the and, and and what's so cool is like when it's actually when it's in there, it almost looks like it's one piece. You know, it's so precise. You can't. There's not even like there's a bit of space between the two, even though there is obviously a little bit of space. Um, Otherwise, it wouldn't turn, and it would. So, you know, so you pop that out, save that. You could, at this point, disassemble the rest of the handle uh, because now the blade is out. So, since I've already loosened up this one, let me move this in frame because I know that the YouTube won't let you have too much. All right, um, I'm gonna loosen up this standoff in the back. Screw it. And now we're going to get some more little parts as we go. All right. now, like I said, with mine, I uh, I only attached the langer to one of the metal, uh, one of the uh, titanium slabs, so I'm able to lift off the the uh, the handle slab without an issue. If you if you if your lanyard went all the way through to both sides, if you're using a lanyard, uh, it would be a little difficult, and you'd have to kind of go like that to get it off. But in my case, because it's not attached to anything other than the, the lanyard, I could lift it straight up, and then I just put place it down nearby. Um, now, you know, because you're doing this slow, you know, you want to just take your time with this kind of thing. Uh, you'll see that the the back standoff. It's bigger than the front one. Like I said, like J Lo, it's big in the back. Right? So here's the back standoff. And then there's um, the front one here, this side. It is also like a barrel, but it's a, it's a lot smaller than that one. See, so it's small and big. Right? And then if I lift the uh, handle slab up, both pins will fall out that were holding the, uh, basically this goes through, you know, each one of these, uh, I forget what they call them. This is, this is actually the blade stop. Once, you know, th th this combined with this becomes the blade stop. And then this is the uh, the, other, the back spacer and the, pla the back spacer barrel, I guess you'd call it, right? So. You're gonna to want to clean the uh, the inside of the blade, the, the handle. I mean, and get any uh, residue off that may be present, you know, any dust and things like that. You know, the uh, microfiber cloth is nice because it doesn't leave any lint or anything. All right, so you get it nice and clean. You clean any nook and cranny, you can see there's, not, there's nothing really in there. It's very, very flat and sterile inside. All right. 
Um, you might want to at this point take a, a Q-tip and you know maybe clean out any uh, any of the holes. There's a little bit of dirt in there, not that much. Dust. I'm right. going to use a different one. I would clean out the inside of the standoffs. And, like, when I initially saw these, you know, videos about taking this thing down, I was really concerned, like, because some of the stuff looks looks so similar to each other, you know, you know, it was like, this looks a lot like that, you know, it's like, you know, and then you get this, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, you know, you get, you get, you get similar looking things, and some of them are, are bigger than the others, and what happens if I put them in the wrong spot here and there, but I'm going to show you, it's kind of interesting, um, so, you know, I'm cleaning off all the different parts here. Uh, you know, clean the inside as much as you can of the these these uh, standoff rods and stuff. And you know, the the advantage of this mat is that you know it keeps it from rolling around, so you don't have to worry as much about things being lost. And now you have the the back handle slab where the clip was on it, right? And I reassemble it like a sandwich, right? I take one of the uh, the back standoffs, rods or whatever, and I, and I push it through so that it sticks through like that through the front one. And a lot, you know, a lot of these are the, these are all the same size. Even like this, the one that goes through the blade, it's all the same size. So if you if, if you mix them up, it's all right. Um, and so that's the back one, right? The clip side. So now remember. It was big in the back, right? So here's the bigger of the spacers. Put that on top of the rod, right? It was a smaller one in the front. Now you got the one for the pivot, and you got the other one for the top blade stop. How am I going to make sure I don't screw it up? Well, if you try to take the uh, the wrong size one and you try to just put it into the into the tang, you see that it goes right through it. It's way too loose. So, it can only go one place, so it's going to go here. Right? If, if you did try to, if you did, if you were worried about this one, the back barrel one, that's way too big. It's not even going to fit in. So, there's no possibility of that. So, you have only one left, and that can only go in there. Alright, so that's interesting. Alright, so now you have the, the back slab. Right, I got the back spacer, the big spacer in the back, like J-Lo, right? Big in the back. And then the smaller blade um, stop there, right? Another thing, let me just take this apart again for a second. It's kind of interesting is this. You see this discoloration here on the lock bar? This different color here? That's because it's, this is, uh, heat treated and, and made very hard compared to the rest of this metal. That's why it looks different. There's also a small ball bearing in there. The ball, uh, ball bearing, and, and, that's a, and that, that's what presses into the detent that's in the back of the blade. I mean, it's on the, the bottom of the blade here. There's a little, little bump in there that fits onto the, uh, the ball bearing that's on there. So, since that's going to be a point of contact, I'm going to put a little bit of a uh, bead of lubrication on that while I have it out. All right, so now I'm going to put the, um, the back, big back stick baser, right? Actually, this was the other one. It doesn't matter, though. I'm going to put this one in. I'm going to put the big back spacer on. Big in the back, J Lo. Big in the back. All right. Now I'm gonna put the front of the handle. You know, not the clip side, on top of that. All right. And you probably say, "Well, what about the blade?" Well, that's gonna come later. All right. So I'm gonna press this on, 
and you want to line up the uh, the top of the shaft that goes through into the top handle slab. Put it down, and you'll you'll see it lining up here and here. Put the screw in, one screw. Just you know, just get it a little going, and then take another one. Doesn't matter which; they're all the same. Screw these on. Now, I'm going to screw the back one on firm, but the uh, the front one I'm going to just do it almost all the way in because I want it to be a little loose so that I could position the blade in there. Oh, I made it too tight, so I'm going to loosen it up. Right, so now it's a little loose. And it gives me a little bit of play here and here. Now, you'll notice that the uh, lock bar is now pressing against the other handle slab, you know, and that you could obviously move that, because that's how it works. Um, you're going to reassemble the blade, and you remember that the, um, the blade has, there's uh, different um, phosphorus washers. So I'm going to take, and remember the, the big one is going to be on the same side as the stud, thumb stud, on the right hand model. So I'm going to first draw a, a little circle of lubrication around the pivot area. I'm going to take the larger phosphorus washer, just place it on top of the lubrication there. I'm going to, I'm going to like kind of flip it over. It's going to, it's going to kind of stay on for a second that uh, the phosphor by the, uh, the cohesion of the lubrication. I'm going to draw another circle of uh, lubrication around the the other side of the blade, pay attention by the uh, the detent. I'm going to put the other phosphorus washer on there. You'll see that they kind of float around a little bit. They're not held perfectly in, sh in, in place because they need something to kind of keep them apart. I mean, to keep them centered. And that thing would be the bushing itself. The bushing is thicker than the blade. It's thicker than the blade, and when it when it fits in, it protrudes on either side, and then it also centers up the the washers as it goes through in a nice way. It's kind of cool. I'll show you. Let me just take this off for a second. Let me just remember I said it was such a tight fit that the um, you got to line it up. such a tight fit that the uh, once you get it on it's you know it becomes like a seamless thing you know and just make sure a little bit more lubrication on there because my finger wiped it off I'm gonna put this back on and now you see this little shoulder on the bushing right, and that holds the that washer on remember big washer thumb stud right hand model right and now I could put this inside the handle. Uh, it's not going to fit because of the lock bar, so you got to kind of pull up on the lock bar a little bit. And being careful that the blade is, is sharp and, and alive, you know, you're going to be careful with that. You're going to first just position it. And it's, the way that he, he made it, Chris Reeve made the design is, is that it, it will fit. You know, if, if, if it's not fitting, you did something wrong. You know, or you're not sliding it in properly. Like you may, you may hit into the shoulder of the uh, the bushing or something like that. But you know, you could just position it, wiggle it gently, and it'll start to go into place. And then as it slides in, you know, the the, the back end of the blade is going to start to get closer and closer to the lock bar. And then you're going to have to move the lock bar a little bit. And then you're also looking down through the blade. You'll see into the. You'll see through both sides of the blade if, if those washers are positioned correctly. And now you can see right through. See that? And because the, uh, in this case, the rounded side of the screw is, is, is up for down here, I'm going to put the rounded side through here. I guess it doesn't really matter, but in this case I'm going to do it anyway.
So round the side through, and you, you know you're going to wiggle it and make sure that you know you may have to look to make sure that it's lining up right and stuff like that as you do it. But it does go, and it'll just slide into place with a, with a reassuring click. Right? And you take the uh, the other side of the screw, and then put it into the other side of the pivot, and begin to tighten it. Now, I don't go all the way at this point because I'm going to still tighten up this one, the one that's a little further back, the one that I loosened up before. I'm going to tighten up this one. And you feel that it just stops because you can't really go more than that. And I'll tighten up the rest of the blade all the way. Firm, right? Now, it, it stops. It's, it's so machined perfectly that it'll stop, yet the blade can still move easily. That's because this has got nothing to do, really, with how well this is being held in position. Because it's held in position by the pressure of the two handle slabs and the, 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 the phosphorus washers and the top of that um, bushing that goes through is what's keeping this floating. Really, it floats. So now you can test it by opening all the way. You hear that click? That, that click noise is the sound of the lock bar touching the back of the blade tang. And there's the lock up in there. If you can see that. And you can close it and you feel it's buttery smooth now. You know, and once you do this a number of times, you know, you'll really appreciate how well it's made and also, you know, the realization that this is this is um knife is made in America. You know. And you know, I'm a, I'm an American. And this represents like like a very high level of precision and and um and quality, right? And as an American, like I'm proud that this is made here, and it's made by American people, you know. And it may cost, you know, I got this for like $350 used. It probably would be like 400 something new, or maybe with the, with these types of uh, handle slabs on here, you know, the uh, uh, micarta inlays. You know, they're so precisely machined. You know, like they're actually set within. The, the micarta slabs are actually set within the titanium of the handle, right? They, they, he mills it out with such a level of precision that when you place the uh, micarta within them, it, you can't even see the, the, any space between the micarta and the titanium. It almost looks like it's a sticker that's on top of the titanium, but it's actually within the titanium and it sticks above it, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch, right? Um, you know, to realize that this is something that an American person made. You know, like usually in the past, like I've I've associated like you know American stuff with like kind of like not necessarily the greatest quality. She always assumed that you know people in America are really lazy or whatever. You know, that's like the the general consensus, but it's not the case. And in this case, this is something that Americans made with a lot of pride. And precision, right? And you know everybody likes to make a decent amount of money, right? And if you do good work, you should get rewarded for. Okay, I had a little bit of problem with the video. What I was trying to say was, um, this is, you know, a, a, an American person made this, right? American people made this, and they made it really well, and it's. It's something that Americans should be proud that we can make this kind of stuff. And that we can make something that is envious around the world. Sure that, you know, you can make something very similar to this in Japan or China or, you know, wherever, India, whatever it is. But I'd rather pay the money knowing that an American person is going to be getting the money for this. Because... I, I, you know, I believe that part of the problem with our economy is that we're spending too much money and sending that money outside of our own borders. Right? Not that I have anything against buying things that are made overseas. You know, I mean, I, I you know, everyone knows I, I buy a lot of knives from Kylie Harris. He's in New Zealand. You know what I mean? So, you know, some of my money's going to him. You know, 
but in, in this case, I got no problem paying three hundred dollars, three fifty or four hundred dollars for a knife that I know somebody made with precision here in America, because it, it's it's worthy of the money, because they did a good job, and everybody likes to get a decent wage, and as long as we can keep our money. You know, the people that do good work in America should get as much as they could possibly get because it enriches them, and then they use that money to buy things that are close to them, like, you know, you, you go down to a deli, you buy a sandwich, you know, you, you spread that money around. That, that exponentially assists the economy of the people that are around the people that make these things. Whatever, whatever it is you do, you know. Whether, you, whether you're in a, working in an office or whatever it is, as long as you have pride in what you do and you try to do it as good as you could possibly do it and you get the best quality you can produce, it, it's, it influences everything else. And it, if we can show the world that we're making things that are envious, that there's something that, that not everybody can do and that the money can stay near where it's being made, and being spent on, you know. I mean, I know a lot of people overseas buy these things too, which is actually very good, you know. Uh, it's a change. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad that I bought this. I don't mind spending the money on this, you know. This was also a lot of money too. I spent a lot of money on this, you know, and that money helped people that are near, that are that are in America, you know. And you know, not that I'm prejudiced against anybody else outside the world, you know. I'm not, you know. I buy a lot of things that were made overseas, but in this case. I don't mind, you know, if some, whenever I hear someone say, hey, you know, how could you spend $300, $400 on a knife? Are you insane? Look what you're getting, though. And look what it did, you know. Look what it's, it's, it's helping people that are nearby, you know. And you gotta, we got to help our own before we start helping everybody else in the world, you know, because we got to keep the money close to where we live so that we can have something for our future generations and, and assure that we, we all continue to work and enjoy the fruits of our labors. All right? So this is Trader Joe's. Hopefully I'll try to stitch these two videos together. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody that maybe had some difficulty with this. Alright? Thanks a lot, and have a good day.